Hey everyone, it's Jared here from Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm coming to you on the uh, Zen Studios uh, Steam landing page uh, today. It's part of the uh, Zen Arcade Weekend promotion. Lots of great uh, small and medium sized developers offering a good selection of games at the moment, but given that it's a pinball podcast that we're all about, I'm going to be focusing on pinball effects today. So I was trying to think about what games might be good ones to play um, leading up and I asked my Discord community about what sort of things we might want to see on the stream and considering that Star Trek The Next Generation is going to be releasing uh, to the platform um, in the coming weeks, I think it might be a good idea to have a bit of a space themed thing going on as we lead up to that. So I'm going to start with a bit of a sleeper hit, um, which is the uh, uh, Homeworld Journey to Higara table. Uh, it's an interesting table in that it's um, a bit of a, a slow burner. Um, when I originally sort of started playing Homeworld, um, it really felt like a, a slow playing game, but as I sort of got used to the title, I realized that that's kind of the point. Um, because it is designed to feel oh, like um, the the actual uh, titular arcade, uh, no, titular title of um, the um, the video game itself. So it's supposed to have a long play feel. So I figured, why not get into it, do a bit of gameplay of it, and uh, we'll explore it together. So um, you can choose a diff number of different game modes in Pinball Effects. Um, for the Zen original tables, the uh, options are Classic, Arcade, and then you've got your Hot Seat, where you can play local um, uh, multiplayer games here. Um, on the Belly Williams tables, or the Williams Pinball Collection, as it's known in the, um, the platform, um, those have an extra pro mode feature, where you can um, access uh, a steeper table layout, harder rules, less extra balls, tighter tilts as well so it makes it a little bit um, harder to sort of smack the table around but in this particular case you've got classic um, classic mode only um, you've also got some additional challenge modes here which are flips one ball time and distance each one of those has slightly different characteristics so we're going to play a couple of those as well um, i think we'll start off though with a bit of a warm-up and a good way to warm up on a table like this uh, is to do distance challenge uh, let's get into it Okay, so with the distance challenge, ago, a satellite detected an object under the sands of the Great Desert. An expedition was sent. An ancient starship. This is the uh, sort of sand. overview. I would play if you haven't seen it before. Ruin was a single stone that would change the course of our history forever. On the stone was etched a galactic map, and a single word more ancient than the clans themselves: Higara. Our home. So what you're seeing here isn't actually a pre-rendered scene. This is actually direct imagery from the game using its engine. Um, so it's a really high detail model that you get in these tables from Zen, both original and the, the Williams Pinball as well. So. Um, I just want to sort of let this roll and just sink in how detailed the the tables actually look because they are really quite beautiful things to look at and close up. All right, let's get in some gameplay. Glad to have you around. All right, so you've got yourself a online. skill shot straight off the bat here. You'll notice that there's a distance challenge meter uh, showing up there. Um, now that distance challenge gives you 200 distance units. I'm trying to work out whether they're metric or imperial. I don't really know, but I know they do count down rather fast, faster than you probably like. So the idea with this skill shot is to sort of launch it about, see how little dots are ascending here. You want to launch it about here. You can shoot the left ramp or the center spin disc. As you can see there, I missed that opportunity. Stay on target. And if you drain, you do actually dip out on the um, skill shot. But that's not to worry, because you've got um, 
quite a few more opportunities in distance mode to flip around the table and do stuff. So uh, I'm going to start um, in the uh, this the middle sort of mechanism here. Now, what this mechanism does is actually your mode start. So you want to um, trap up nicely, shoot it up in there. Um, and build up your research ships so you can actually do a mission. That's what we're going to do. You can trap up pretty safely when it ejects. Sometimes gives you a bit of a um, an interesting eject um, out of there, or interesting feed, but normally it's pretty predictable. Shoot it in, trap it up. Just let it roll and settle. Alright. Sometimes it'll kick it over there. So we want to try and just aim and shoot. Now we've got a campaign mission lit. Okay, so now you get to select from a diff number of different um, modes. Each one has different goals. I want to show you this one though, Diamond Shoals. So what happens is you know, hyperspace to Copy a different that. area. Let's take them down one by one. And now you're taking the perspective of the actual mothership. You've got to destroy a whole lot of asteroids that are coming towards you. Including really fast moving ones. Now depending on what controller system or platform you're playing on, I'm playing on PC here. Um, you get a nice little pulse on the Xbox control when you destroy an asteroid, which is quite a nice visual feedback. Alright, so that gives you a tidy 4 million. Now, if you are a regular viewer of the Blockade Pinball Podcast Twist channel, you'll know that there are different strategies to take with this table. Um, you can uh, choose to do that Diamond Shoals mode, but instead of completing it, get destroyed on the last a asteroid, just let it hit the ship. And you can kind of keep on doing that mode over and over again, and getting around 3 or 4 million points per time. It's a really neat and safe way of building up a score if you're going for um, a high score in the leaderboards in certain modes. One ball is actually a really good mode to use that strategy in, because you don't want to be flipping around the table and doing a lot of side-to-side -side motion on the table because, you know, that's when you'll drain. Up and down motion in pinball is good. Side-to-side -side equals death. So, you want to try and avoid the side-to-side -side as much as you can. On our way. So, as I've been talking to you there, what I've done is I've qualified a mode start again. We're going to do a different one now. Alright, so, we might do... It doesn't really matter which one you do. Let's try Chapel Perilous. Alright, so what you're doing here is you're just shooting all the lit fan shots. What you're trying to do is deploy um, craft to protect the mothership from this massive asteroid that's coming towards the ship. Underway. And of course, as it advances, you want to try and get on it as fast as you can because the more ships you have coming towards it. Oh, that's close. Just need to dial on some shots here. Alright, we've got one going. Obviously, oh, come on. The more ships you can throw at this thing, the faster it's going to get destroyed, and the faster you're going to reach your goal. So you can see on the playfield you've got the flashing shots remaining. There's a shot in this loop here, which I just ganked as far as the shot goes. Another one. I may not make it in time. I think I started my run a little bit too late with this. We are wearing thin here. It's ours so far. Watch the counter. We might just make it. Let's see what we're doing. Yes. Just made that one. That was close. A little bit too close. Now you'll see that there's a deliberate design in this this 
pinball layout and sort of feel to really look like the video game. If you played Homeworld on PC, you'll know immediately when you see the ships almost flying around in a sort of tilt shift, a tilt shift sort of perspective. This is how the game looks when you play it as well. So it's uh, really quite a cool look to this table. So you see that as I've gone through this, I'm down to 79 units now distance units and that gets a crew as your ball just rolls around the play field okay looking fine over here resource right. controller complete I know Working that ball collector. pops into there so we're gonna fleet destination locked in let's continue getting a bit of bonus X you see the bonus X symbol was uh, lit there well oh, that was a nice little loop around there now, it wants bumpers. It's counting us down in the um, video display that we need to go and hit the bumpers. So let's see if we can give it what it wants. That was a little nudge to the right there to sort of get it to settle where it needed to go. Resources exhausted. Interesting thing with the distance mode is that you might sort of be tempted to go for multi ball as a main strategy when you're playing this particular style, but the problem with that is that every ball counts towards your distance meter. So the more balls you have, the more distance meter you're gonna burn up. So it's a bit of a a tricky strategy to find on each table. Each table will have its different way of um, managing it. So we might go to gardens here. Alright, so gardens is pretty much a straight up shoot all the things blocking the lanes mode. That. And your idea is to shoot all the different um, vet blocks and barriers on each of the lanes and that will give you the mode. For 13 generations, we have protected so one the ramp there. If you have come to consume uh, the we've also got one on the lift ramp. Once. We'll get rid what of your intentions. And there's one just in that little um, scoop to the very right here, which is a late shot on the flipper. A little bit too late there. Let's try for that one again. There we go. And now you'll see that there's one just hanging out in the uh, spin disc, which will try and shoot, not around, but actually into. And that should give us the mode. I want to try and get the shot back on there. Destination confirmed. Yeah, let's do exactly that. So I just missed because I ran out of distance credit there, so I would have had that last mode, at that last um, shot there to complete the mode, but I just kind of dipped out. Uh, okay. So that was a, a leaderboard score. So that I bettered my original score in distance challenge, and I'm now 30th position. Um, across all platforms. Um, you can actually filter um, based on uh, platform in here as well if you want. Um, you can also do that from the main screen. So um, you can also switch between weekly scores with your friends um, and all time scores across all leaderboards. You've also got, um, you can filter on my score as well or your friend scores if you've um, friended people through Steam or the platform of your choice. So it's pretty cool. It's fun to compete with pinball. That's the whole point of it. So. All right. So now that we've warmed up, let's go back Ooh, into home world. Our home world. And we'll do just a straight up classic gameplay of this table. So this is your traditional three balls start. Um, 
go through and play like a normal pinball machine like you find in the arcade. Let's see if I can do better on the skill shot. Hyperspace successful. Oh, I just ran out of time there. It's not over yet. Okay, now you'll see that on the ramps now you've got flashing symbols um, for save. Now if I was quick enough there, I could have gone up that ramp and got me a ball save on the left um, outlane. From experience, the game tends to drain the most in the left, so you want to protect the left outlane as much as you can. It's just a bit of a, a tip if you're playing this one and you're having a bit of a struggle with it. Because it can be a bit brutal, this one. It seems like a really sort of a an easy layout, but it does have its traps that you need to be aware of. Now, what I'm going to try and do is I'm just shooting around a little bit, taking a few risks here with the ball. Um, <clears throat> trying to build up some of the support things on the table. So each of these lanes has a meaning and uh, sometimes if you shoot around some of these lanes you're going to get some... Oh, I just missed the opportunity on the, uh, the ball save there as well. Alright, let's go... Get. That's good. Underway. Always a safe uh, eject out of that right scoop. You can always get a lane letter there, so use that to your advantage. Always feeds nicely into there. Coordinates confirmed. So, to play multi ball on this table, you've got to keep shooting that um, sort of seesaw thing that I just shot there. Um, a number of times to actually qualify locks. Okay. <clears throat> now, if I shoot that that right loop again, I get the opportunity to create a resource controller, and that can help you uh, in the mission. Okay, that's it. Nice work. That's a random resource award there. So bonus X. for the resource controller. Resource controller complete. Nice. Okay, so we've got to hurry up. Prepping for collection. So Resources now transferred. I can shoot the ramps for kickback. So now I've lit the left hand kickback, which is a good protection strategy. Uh, and I can go and have a bit of a play around now with modes and stuff because I know I'm protected on that uh, left out lane. So it's just dribbled in there, it's lucky. Destination confirmed. Oh, that was nice. Okay. We see it. Yeah, nice job. The speed just pops. It really is random, there is no set path for that ball to go when it goes off there. It is purely up to the way the ball's sitting. Uh, because up in that mechanism, there's like a, a knife edge that the ball travels on. Resources exhausted. Okay. So, we will do Diamond Shoals to get us started. Get some points at the board. Copy that. Let's take them down one by one. Right. Where are they going to come from now? We want to just take care of the fast moving ones now. It's going to be interesting because I've got... I'm coming from both sides here. Ooh, that was really lucky. I nearly dipped out there. Won't be able to get back to this one. Oh man, I was close. These, are, these asteroids are coming down in a really odd pattern. A lot of fast movers in this round. Alright. Four million. Easy money. 
now. I haven't quite worked out a, a way yet to do a safe shot from either flipper for the lock. It doesn't really look like you can backhand it that well. So it looks like a shot from the right flipper is your only way to get that lock saucer. So when the ball does present itself on the right flipper, give it a go and see how quickly you can build up your lock. I'm going to take a shot there now, see how I go. And you know, the worst case, as I just demonstrated there, is that even if you are trying for the lock, it will often just end up in the um, uh, the research ship saucer anyhow, so it's not a bad problem to have. Let's do some ramps because it's feeling good. On my way. Destination confirmed. Alright. Group 1 acknowledged. Coordinates confirmed. Okay, so that's where you lock a ball for carry multi ball. So to get carry multi ball, what you're doing is you're shooting the lane just to the right of the saucer. Right, so we've got Bentusi. Take us home. Now, when it says take us home, you'll see there's a little barrier Greetings. on that lane. What you want to do is shoot that because that's a. Whoa, okay, that's my ball over. So that was going to be a hurry up shot and you can get that hurry up shot every time you complete home so it's a good easy way to get points okay another shot on skill shot let's do better that's not better oh just missed hey that's a nice feed Oh, settled in there nicely. Destination locked in. Okay, let's get it back in that saucer and cash in. Um, let's do graveyard. Okay, so this one, as you can see, Open up gaps. Look for the gaps. I one. you've got gaps that you got to shoot, and you got to shoot the red targets that are highlighted there. Now, you've got to be strategic with your time. And you've got to be wary that there's other obstacles around there, otherwise you will drain. Um, now, a gap does open up here, so you can get up to that upper one. You've just got to be patient for it to swing around. That's there. Yeah, that was a nice feed into the lock as well. I'll take that. Sometimes it works, you know. Sometimes you get lucky. Okay. Let's go and shoot the carrier. Let's shoot it once more. On my way. And three times the charm. That means you'll get your carrier lock lit on the eject, which I missed. But again, managed to get into the saucer, so not a big deal. try and start up salvage because it's a bit of an interesting looking mode. It's definitely a uh, only in digital pinball moment with uh, salvage mode. Uh, Alright, you'll see that we've now got a little um, target wrecked kill on each of the shots. Now we've already got a shot by shooting the left ramp. Um, so what we're going to try and do now is get this ball up the right ramp and that will actually salvage the shot. Now, once you've done that, repeat the process. Keep on shooting around the playfield and finding the other red targets. And then you can go and shoot that left ramp to uh, cash it in. You can, as you can see, only get one at a time. So you're best just getting rid of it. Cycle those rollovers so you get the open E. In fact, didn't actually eject this time. It's kept it in the hole for us. Captured ship secure. Alright. Get those captured ships. Destination confirmed. Alright. Finding our ancient home is our only hope. Alright, you'll see that that uh, target has popped up again. I'm going to try and get the Got it. 
We're locked on here. Hurry Subject up here. Secured. If I can just gotcha. get it. I picked up that target though, which is nice. It's about right, got it. Mission complete. Alright, so that in itself is a mission. Destination confirmed. Getting you back home again. So Alright, so it wants us to shoot up the ramp again. So we're going to try and do that. Final ball. Okay, Ooh, nice way. skill shot. That was a super. As you can see, good points. Alright, two more balls to lock the multi ball there. And where are you going to settle? Going to the left, okay. Let's see if we can get this ball. Oh, that was really close. All right. One more now. Now, depending on where this feeds, that will play well for us. We're gonna try and get carry a lift here. Oh, jeez. <laughs> that required a good shove. All right, so we got carry a lift. Let's see if we can catch this multi ball in. Oh, so close. Have another shot on it. Trap up. Get it nice and stable. Alright, carrier started. Group three acknowledged. Now it's just a matter of shooting all the things. Don't worry too much about um, draining your ball initially. You get a pretty generous ball save in this mode. Resource injection received. So, all you're doing is shooting the flashing shots. Oops. That was a quick multi ball, that one. Alright, I've got left kickback lid again, which is going to be great. Ooh, an extra ball. Whoa, okay. That is very handy. I'll take the extra ball. Let's shoot the bumpers. That's what it wants us to do. Because destination confirmed. All right, let's make it quick. Let's just get up to that uh, bumpers again. Resources exhausted. Lynn Tuzi would like the information you have acquired. It will be transferred automatically if you choose to. Try. <coughs> Okay. So we now got an opportunity to lock balls. Let's try and do that. We do have a Bentuzi opportunity here, but I'm going to try and just focus on the multi ball if I can. Hang on, they're coming in. See why it's useful to have that left kickback lift? It does love to go down there. Sometimes you just can't save it. Okay. Had to get that one out of the gap lane there. Uh, go to the gardens. <coughs> Fuel pods. Let's go. See, that's frustrating, right? But it's alright, we got an extra ball. So. Misses the skill shot. Stay on target. All right. Now, because the build is so long for the lock, you really want to try and get it while it's lit. 
Group one receiving. See how the ball stays up there now? It's pretty cool. Roger that contact. We see it. I just gotta do that two more times. Hey, got a lip kick guy. Open up again, that's great. Will come in very handy now. Um, what shot can I take here? Get it back to the right flipper to shoot the lock. <coughs> Alright. And one more shot, let's make it count. Yeah, alright. All multi balls. Oh, fire out. Come on now. All that build for such a small multi ball benefit. Yeah. I had to really give that a good nudge then because I didn't have any uh, protection. Oh, okay, no saving that one. This is fleet command. All right. Okay, well that's uh, so it's a local high school table, and um, I don't think that's my highest score in this table. So I need a little bit more to get um, up to my thirty-nine million there. That's okay. That was still a pretty good game. Alright. Now, continuing with the space theme. Um, let's go and play. With space shuttle, I think. Space station, sorry. So as I was talking about before, you'll see there's a pro option here. Um, so as it says in the description, you get um, a steeper playfield, wider outlane gap, no extra balls, and also, like I said, tight tilt. So to contrast the two who haven't seen promo before, let's play classic first. So this is a pretty basic game, this one, from the perspective that you've got a clearly defined goal, and it was really close, um, of locking balls and then um, starting multiple. So that's one ball locked. So Space Station is in the same era as the original Pinbot table. Um, uses the same hardware system. Um, but this one is a bit of a unique table in that it doesn't really have any return lanes. You'll see that there's no lanes that feed the ball neatly back um, to the flipper. Uh, so, from that perspective, it's a little bit uh, unique. And it makes it really hard to play because you don't have safe feeds. Alright, that's, that's as easy as it is to start multiple in this game. Shoot your locks three times and you're in multiple mode. You get treated as really cool green effect on the playfield. They were able to code in different coloured GI lighting into the game, which is really cool. And that's a, a uneventful multiple. Which, you know, typical of the era. These games are not meant to be easy. They're meant to take your money and take it fast. To make the operator happy. And I think that's a contrast and difference in, in between the Williams collection and a lot of the other tables in Zen's platform. The, the Williams tables are really recreations of the originals that you see in the arcade and they have a very different play style and they attract a very different audience um, to the platform overall. Um, the, a lot of new players find 
that the Williams tables are actually a bit, a little bit inaccessible as far as like easing you in. So yeah, they can get a little bit, uh, they can take a little bit of getting used to, but they're just classic designs. Um, there's already in the in the collection. There's a lot of you know the top twenty greatest tables of all time in the collection already. So it's a real, it's it's pretty cool having basically you know a top tier arcade sitting in your console or your um, uh, or your computer. As you can see, the ball is really wild on this table, it's just going everywhere. Oh yep, that's going down. Okay. So that was classic mode, that's just your regular, sort of a friendly version of the, um, the table layout and the slope of the table and that sort of thing so let's exit out now and what we're going to do is we're going to do the same table but we're going to play it in pro and i'm pretty sure if you're new to the platform you'll be able to see the difference pretty quickly it looks like i've already got a, a table in play so i'm just going to use the restart game feature here to clear that uh in progress game out and we'll start from scratch again now the main difference you'll notice here is when you plunge, the ball moves down the playfield real fast, <laughs> just like that. <laughs> so as you can see, it's got a real rake on the table. Uh, the other interesting thing here is then because they have um, access to the ROM and the table settings, what they can do is adjust some of the game rules. And what they've done here, they've made it so. Oh man, this is going to be a short game, we'll have to have another one on Pro. Uh, what they've done is they've made it so you don't get lock lit initially when you start the table. You have to actually qualify the lock first, so... Hmm. This one is uh, very reminiscent of how these games used to be set up in the arcade. Very brutal. Um, not at all. Forget oh man, okay. See, I only tilted it twice then, and I'm basically ended my ball. Because you can pretty much get one good nudge, and then after that you're on double danger. So you can see it's way harder than the first one. I hardly got any playtime on the table at all. Um, but for the good players out there, um, there is a very big reward getting a good uh, leaderboard position on this table. We're going to have one more crack at it. Just Hopefully I can give you a bit of... Sort of uh, overview of what this table's like. Okay, that's settled relatively nicely. Now, what you need to do is complete those top three rollover lights. By doing that, you'll get your lock qualified. Whoa, okay, that was really lucky. Just trying to get the ball onto the correct flipper and correct position is actually a... Oh, man. <laughs> but <laughs> by doing so, I've just beaten my weekly score on it. So that ball, that score that I got on ball three balls before, I've just basically surpassed that score by one decent game. And the reason why I got a good score there is that I drained in the right out lane and I got the 100,000 points off the right out lane drain. And that is the only reason... <laughs> <laughs> so it just it just wants to head straight for the outlanes with pro mode on this table and there we go see straight into the outlanes can't do anything about it I mean there is actually a rubber if you have a look I'm just using the Y button here to zoom in on the table you can actually see that just above the, the right out lane there, there is actually a rubber there. So theoretically, if you did an upward nudge there, even in pro mode, you should be able to tilt the ball back into play. But the ball hits just such a steep rake in the play field that it's uh, it pretty hard to pretty hard to get it out once it's going down. So um, let's go and plunge again. Ball three see what I can get here. 
apart from dying, which is inevitable. It is pinball after all. Okay, just... And there it goes down the outlane again. Alright. What do they say? Third time's the charm. Let's do it one more time. straight down. Right. I'm trapped. That's going to shoot back out. That's the hole you want to shoot. That top one, that'll take you to the, um, the upper playfield rollovers. Just came out of that at lane. Okay, first ball locked. Now I'm I am actually playing this without the visual effects on. There's a reason for that. In this particular table, if I turn them on, it looks really cool. But you'll see that there's um uh like shuttles and stuff floating around, and I just find that in certain situations the the shuttles kind of block your view about what's going on. So I opt sometimes just to keep the visual effects off. I just do a dead bounce there to try and get some control back to the... Whoa! Oh, no. Okay. It's alright. I've got one more ball to go. It only takes one ball to have a good game in pinball. Let's try for one more. The other thing, too, is in pro mode, your rollover status at the top resets. So if you had... Um, two um, rollovers qualified before you drain, you lose them. So it's it's really harsh settings. Okay, that's ball two lock now. I need one more. And now, as you can see, the other space shuttle is docking at the space station, ready for multi-ball. Now. Now I'm going to try and just get this up into that upper shot without draining. Don't drain. Oh, and I drained. Yep, that's pretty typical. All right. And that was a the best score that I've got so far and even with a score with half a million you still get into the top 100 on this um, pro mode table it's that hard I mean for comparison if you want to have a look at the top score on here and you don't want to have a look at uh, my score you want hang on a second we'll just exit out actually go to leaderboards here we'll do a little switch all so the top at the moment is 2.4 million now as you can see how hard this table is playing in pro imagine getting well, I don't know my maths isn't that good tonight but like 10 times the score um, than what I got uh, actually more like 5 but still that's a lot you know so uh, yeah it's, it's a slog on pro um, but you do feel good if you do it so it's worth giving Pro a go if you're getting a bit bored with the ease of Classic. I'm going to um, exit out of this table. We're going to have a look at something else. I'm just going to quickly sticky beak at our little streaming schedule here. Looks like there's not many people after me, so I think we can go a little bit longer if we want. Uh, and uh, continue to stream. Now, on table it's a, uh, 
a, a long-awaited addition to the platform is, of course, there's two actually. There's The Addams Family and Twilight Zone. Both top 20 tables um, of all time. Um, so it's great to actually have them in the collection. Um, now, which one to play? I think we're going to have a, a go at both. Because why not? <gasps> um, we are going to play them in pro for something different because let's see how punished I get tonight on pinball. Um, Welcome, honored guest. All right. So you can play this without the enhancements on. It just goes back to regular what you see in the arcade. But you know, there's some quite nice enhancements in here. Um, let's see if we can do a nice skill shot here. We didn't, but that's okay because on this era of table, if you punch a ball, you don't get the skill shot, and you don't trigger a switch, you get another shot. So that's a bit of a tip if you're new to um, Valley Williams. In this case, I have triggered a switch. So, given this is pro mode, it plays a little bit differently to uh, uh, the classic mode. So, a few of the feeds and stuff are a little bit different, a little bit more risky. Ooh, okay. See you later. Why, thank you, okay, let's try for another... So still, no targets hit. And it's interesting to see that I've got an even 2 million up there. That's pretty rare to see in pinball. It's normally like 2 million and change. Oh, come on. Let's trap. Let it roll down that uh, slingshot to safety. And we'll shoot the chair. Let's see if we don't get stung the same way as we did last time. Might let it dead bounce. That seems pretty safe. Um, the pops are the best option here if you're in Mamushka mode because that's where most of the uh, easy switch hits are. So let's send it around to the pop numbers. I love the fog that appears during the pops. Ooh, that was just plain luck. And the other thing too is the timers and all the modes are dramatically shortened as well. Alright, that's a bit of a backhand up the ramp, which lets you do another... Ooh. Just let this ball drip down. That was lucky. That was right at the end of the um, race period there for that shot. Okay, time to shoot the chair for an easy 9 million. Dead bounce it for a safe catch. We're talking about pro mode physics here, so it'll be different if you're just playing classic. And then try and get the thing back into the chair again. Uh, you'll get a thing multiball off this one. You can tell what mode you're getting here, obviously, by uh, the uh, mansion lights. And those mansion lights will move as you go into the pop bumpers. They'll jumble around a bit. Alright, so I've got multiball qualified. Let's see if I can't just cash that in. That's a tricky way of doing it. Okay, that will get me a lock, so. So, I can choose to... Oh, actually, I don't think the, uh, the the sneaky lock is actually lit here. That will get me another lock. Kind of thing. Do your job. As you can see, without the effects on, uh, it's very uh, plain looking. Alright, two balls locked. Multi-ball is qualified. Uh, and it looks like you have to shoot the vault in pro mode, which is tricky. Let's just let that ball... Oh, see, that caught me out there, because normally when you're playing um, in the arcade, 
the power magnets would not pick the ball up from that position. Like, they're just not that strong. Um, but Zen's magnets are a little bit stronger than probably stock, mm -hmm. so therefore it picked the ball up and threw it down. So 38. Where does that put me in a leaderboard? I don't think... I think I've done better than that. I don't know. That's actually the first time I've played pro on this table. So there you go. Um, so in the 200s with a score of 38. But if you happen to do well enough like Tarek did, you can and get what, anything over 1.3 billion, which in itself is a pretty big score in this table. But playing under conditions of pro, that's a, that's a fairly good score. That would be a score that you would need to get if you were doing a mansion visit. So if you completed all the modes, you'd probably get a score close to Robo's score there, 547. Uh, incidentally, Robo is streaming as well uh, to Zen's pages, so keep an eye out for his streams. He's a, he's a great player and it's fun to watch. Um, so that's Adam's Family in Pro. Really nice recreation. Um, but then we go to Twilight Zone. Now, they've done a pretty nice job with Twilight Zone here. Uh, its recreation is, is very, very nice. You unlock this so, door with the key of imagination. This is without any of the visual effects. Um, it's just your bog standard Twilight Zone, but with the visual effects on, you get a few little tweaks here and there. They put a few um, tells from the show. If you're a bit of a fan of Twilight Zone, you will know what those are. Yeah, it's just very steep, so all the feeds that I'm used to playing in classic mode don't work in this game. <laughs> Let's see if we can dead pass though, because this will be quite a safe way of getting it out of the slot. Yes. And then a safe shot into the gumball. Will we get a power ball first out? Looks like we did. Alright, let it dead bounce. Feed it, whoa, jeez. Jeez, the timing is so different. Oh, okay. We did not give the power ball back its, uh, the power back its power ball. But that's okay. Hopefully if we get enough, um, extra balls and stuff here, we might be able to coerce it back out of the trough. Oh, not if it's going to do that. Did you even get to flip it? Okay. Again. Couldn't even flip it. That's all, folks. <laughs> Just like that. As you can see, I did better on a previous game and got it in the mid 50s. Um, I think we should have another go because that's not indicative how how pro works. It was just me going, OMG, this is pro mode. It is really hard compared to what I'm used to. Oh, look. Got a really neat thing here is that. Um, Zen has implemented logic that remembers the position of the power ball between games. Now, this is a little bit important because um, there are some games out there and there's in Williams Pinball that rely on game state being remembered. Now, Zen hasn't quite got the whole game state logic, like the carryover jackpots and stuff, quite worked out yet, just because of the way the ROM emulation works. But for physical things like balls, they can actually track the state of that game to game. So, in this case, I want to actually qualify the Powerball straight out of the trough, and I want to get it um, recognized as a Powerball. So to do that, I need to pass it over a trough sensor, which is uh, an eddy sensor, or a, basically a, mag a magnet sensor under the playfield. So, to do that, 
just need to put it into a slot basically or a, a, a hole day. and one of those holes is the camera hole so I'm trying to select a shot that's not going to kill me which you know pretty much all of them will at the moment because it's pro alright trap up nice uh, I need to shoot it into the um, the player piano which is where the clock is so this will give me a shot on that, which I miss. The other one is the camera, which is underneath the um, power field, that big assembly on the left. Safe bounce. Oh yeah, okay. Okay, good. It's gone to the player piano. Why isn't it giving me my power ball? That should be giving me my power ball if it goes down any of those holes on the playfield. It should be giving me my power ball there, so I think something's not quite right with that. This table has been a difficult one for the studio to get right as far as um, the emulation goes and the ball handling, because there's a lot of stage balls in this game, probably the most stage balls of um, any Belly Williams table currently in the collection. So you can have you get all the stage balls in the, uh, the gumball machine, so it needs to manage that state. It also needs to manage any balls that are in the lock mechanism and keep track of those. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of logic that's sort of floating around this table that I would imagine is pretty tricky for the studio to engineer. So it's, it was a little bit of a, um, a problem when it was launched at this table, but it has dramatically improved since then. And it can only get better as they get better at working out these ball state things. Probably about the same score as I got before, actually. Mm. In other words, low. So that's Twilight Zone. Really nice recreation. The other one that's really nice to see too is Indy. Uh, Indy is uh, the most expensive table to purchase in the app. And um, I get you, I guess you can probably guess why that is. Uh, Indiana Jones isn't a cheap license, so uh, the price reflects that, but honestly, it's worth the money. This table is gorgeous, and it plays very faithfully to the arcade. So I'm playing on pro mode on this one too, which means it will be fast as heck. Yep. Yep, really fast. Okay. So all your points in this game, if you've never played any before, had the pleasure of playing it, uh, it's all modes. Um, your modes are really important in this game because um, they get carried over and that's the end of that ball. Bye bye <coughs> As you can see, I just got credited 5 million points for that mode that I didn't even get any flips on. So your bonus count in this game is crucial to your strategy for high scoring. So, at every opportunity, try and start the mode. But also, you know, just try and not die, because it's going to kill you pretty fast. Now again, the visual effects in this are pretty nice as well. Um, one thing that, the reason why I'm not playing with um, visual effects on in this particular table, and this is purely um, my choice, is that you'll see then See there where I hit a drop target, but it didn't drop immediately. Um, just for the first um, drop, that's a, a reason why I don't play with the effects on, because it sort of interferes with the way the mechanics work in the game, and uh, that's just not my thing. Um, I like the mechanics to work as they originally intended. This is a good example as well. It's, um, the idol won't move until Indy gets over there, so... It just sort of slows the gameplay down just a touch, and uh, I like Indie to be a fast-playing game, so that's generally why I um, play with the effects off.
but they really have licensed um, the, the sort of Indiana Jones character nicely in this game, which is why I wanted to sort of at least show you it uh, in the stream, even though I don't prefer to play with it. So we'll turn those off. You turn those off with the B button if you're playing on an Xbox controller. And surprisingly, when I'm talking to people about pinball effects and I, uh, we're talking about the game, they often say, oh, well, I really like the Belly Williams things, but I wish you could turn off the effects. And a lot of the time, I have to tell them, to their surprise, that um, you can, just by pressing the, uh, the, the B button. So, uh, yeah, it makes them very happy. Uh, because sometimes the effects, you know, aren't what you want to see. All right. Whoops. <clears throat> we have top men working. That is not a great score. So what I think we're going to do is we are going to drop out of pro mode play now for a bit. And we're going to go into classic mode. get things going here. As you can see, classic mode, all's moving a little bit more sedately. Things feel a little bit more controllable. Um, I'm going to see if I can backhand that mode start. Nearly is possible. There we go. Little trick if you learn how to do it right. Wow, okay, I thought that was going to tip past them. I think I might just restart that one. Feels bad, man. Good thing about having him in your um in your lounge room on the screen. You don't have to worry about restarting if you have a bad start to a game where you're just not feeling it. It's not it's not a dollar. <laughs> you just restart. I'm not gonna restart that one though. Let's play it out. See how far we can get try and prove to you that it doesn't matter if you have a bad start, you can bring a game back from the brink and have a pretty good round. Alright. Mode start. Castle Grunewald. Let that dead bounce so we get control. Trap up. Shoot that captain ball. Oh, straight down. Will you take it easy? Right. Looks like it's all down to the last ball. Indiana Jones. Oh, we someday you come walking back through my door. Where's my father? They have a oh, that steel. He can't help that feed. It normally feeds a little bit more cleanly. Than that, but they must have changed the uh, the yeah. physics on that hole to be a little bit more random. Because right it, it can be quite predictable where it comes out, so it's kind of good to have a little bit sort of wild. Hmm. Oh, one more. Why not? continue with the uh, space theme a little bit after this. Oh, whoops. Probably sooner than we'd probably like, given how um, quickly these uh, balls are ending. Alright, mode start. Nope, drain. Okay. Sure.
Where's my father? They have him in the belly of that That's normally how it feeds. So you can normally just catch it. Twenty million here. Take the path. Ooh, path, okay. And then it feeds like that. This keeps you guessing. Right, I'm just gonna ignore that uh, loop mode. Straight up the path. See if I can qualify both of those lights in one pass. Very good. Trap up. Let it settle. Little sneaky nudge there. And there's your extra ball. And let's see if we can get up there again for a bit more fun on the path of adventure. Oh, that was close. The pit is lit there, so that's an easy 25 mil. And I've just restarted the, because um, I got it the, the last gasp there, I managed to <clears throat> oh, you're cheeky. Look at that. Did you see how it switched the lights on me? Wants to make it a little bit harder. Can't have me getting all those easy points up there. Alright, so we've got a uh, two ball lit. Just got to get it up to that uh, captive ball if I can. Crap. Eight seconds remain. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Alright. That's okay. Extra ball. That's why you get it when you can. Okay, ramps and loops. We can do that. Ooh, that's straight down, isn't it? Nothing but net on that shot. From the, that feed from the uh, saucer. Alright. Notice there that I didn't have to do a full loop. I just had to touch the switch at the beginning of the uh, lane to get that qualification. Which is very generous of the game. Monkey is going off its head, isn't it? Path is lit again. Ooh, it's risky business when it comes back down. Alright. Uh, let's see if we can get that mode start. Yep. Oh, I like this video mode. Time to shoot some dudes. Oh, thanks for the extra ball. Very much, yes. Oh, yeah. It's been a while since I've actually successfully competed that. Oh, that was just... I had to do something about that. It was going straight down. Alright. Mode start again. Oh, close. Ramps for days in this mode. If you can combo them, you get great points. There's a fair few points per shot here. But I'm just bricking everything. There we go. That's one. You gotta preempt where this ball's gonna go. Oh, you know, failed abysmally. But. see that little switch touch will give it to you. So we'll take the subtlety. Monkey business. Oh, I just missed that light. Alright. 
I'm just going to lock a ball, I think. Oh, jeez. That was a risky decision. Uh, lock a ball or start a mode? Ooh, starting a mode. Feels like a good thing to do. Particularly if you've got an extra ball floating around there. Which we do. Alright. Let's see if we can get some ramp action here. Get some flow going. That's in the right direction. Not quite enough to do us. Alright, let's settle. Yes. So you don't have to actually shoot the big long ramp, like the right ramp that feeds all the way around. You can just keep shooting the uh, light jackpot ramp, the left ramp. Uh, music to my ears. Hello, bonus. 132 million. Right? That's where the points are, folks. Alright. Alright, backhanded again. Uh, just castle Grunewald again. The thing about this mode is that it is a little risky. So you you might want to just make a call and not shoot for it because sometimes a captive ball can actually drain you pretty quick. So it all depends on how confident you're feeling on the day. And uh, based on the games I've had so far, I'm feeling less confident. So I might just let that one or not be. Oh, jeez, risking death here. Alright. Get they Oh yes. Hurry up, lit. Oh nearly. Just gotta get it in the uh in the lock there to get the hurry up mode. Oh come on. It's literally I reckon it shrinks by at least half a ball's length when you actually gotta get the shot, right? Okay. Ball two is locked. We're in a pretty good position. Oh, yeah. Now oh, that's going to happen. Oh, that was really lucky. All right. Let's not muck around anymore. Let's just get this molly ball. All right. Now, what you want to do here... Whoa, okay. That really went up there, didn't it? Now I'm just going to get this jackpot. I will take double jackpot if I can get the thing. Yep. Beautiful. Thank you for coming. Alright, I've instantly qualified another double jackpot, which I'm going to try and capitalize on. Oh, boo. Oh, that's a very nice settlement there. Take that. Right, where are the lights going to be now? Carefully, carefully. It's just stuck at the uh, top of the playfield there. See? There it is. Hey, this is pinball. It can happen in real life too. So, we're going to let it do a playfield search. There we go, it just found that there was a stuck ball. And it's returned it to the shooter lane for me. Which, you know, is actually pretty good anyhow, because I get another get another shot on the rollover lanes at the top. So actually not terrible. Oh, down we go. Ooh. We have 
Well, 427 is not a bad score. Not as good as I've done, but still not a bad score on Classic. So in contrast, you can see just how brutal Pro is compared to Classic, you know. Not even 100 million in Pro, but in Classic, it's a much more forgiving mode. So yeah, try it. Try it and see what you think. But for me, it's time for me to actually um, head off now. Um, so thanks very much for, if you are watching, um, for tuning in. Yeah, I hope you're enjoying uh, the Steam uh, uh, event running at the moment, the uh, Zen Arcade Weekend. Um, go and uh, click on the banner um, wherever you see it in the, uh, the publishers that are taking part. Uh, you're going get, to get some good discounts on games if you do. There's some um, specials running already now on some of the games. So check them out and uh, maybe add something different to your catalog, um, your Steam catalog, uh, in my case. Um, but uh, yeah, check it out, have fun, and um, I will see you next time. Hopefully I'll see you on the leaderboards if you are playing Nimble Effects. Until then, see you later. Bye-bye.